passion about acing digital marketing in 2018. Uh, I'm your host. My name is Pradeep Chopra. I'm one of the co-founders and CEO at Digital Vidya. I hope all of you are aware about what we do at Digital Vidya, so I'm not going to spend time on that. What I'm going to spend a little time on is about the webinar today and you know our webinar leader. So as you would have gone through the brief about today's session, you know, it is a very exciting and interesting session about a significant research which is done by Value First over the last few months. And this is their eighth annual research. I've been following their research almost since beginning. And this year we thought of, you know, associating with them, working together to do this. So we have been one of the associate partners uh, with Value First in creating this research. This There was an extensive survey done and more than 350 successful marketeers from India participated in that. And their collective insights are part of this, you know, report, which is Digital Dividend 2018 by Value First. And uh, I'm very excited myself to get more deeper about the insights which we are going to hear about that research. And this covers various aspects of uh, digital uh, media in terms of uh, you know what are the priorities of marketeers about the budgeting uh, their success their challenges the mediums they look at focusing on the attribution of for roi and more and we are going to hear that in depth and our webinar leader is puneet motil and i know puneet since many years and uh, while i personally have 17 years experience uh, puneet has even more than that. So over 20 years experience across product management, sales, marketing, including at some of the largest brands. And uh, Puneet, uh, you know, earlier was a co-founder of Octane Media, which got acquired by Value First, where he is currently chief marketing officer. Value First started in 2003 and today is one of the leading companies which create you know, engagement between brands and its customers. So they are one of, they define themselves as a digital engagement company. Uh, so they are doing very exciting work. And one of their exciting work is about creating this annual report. Uh, without taking much time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to welcome uh, Puneet and uh, I give it over to him to take it over. Puneet, I'm changing the presentation to you. I'll put my video off. Now, uh, while Puneet is taking over, one thing I want to let everyone know is uh that we will have enough time for doing q and a towards the end of this session uh but given all of you are on mute at any point of time you have a question input or observation you can continue to use the questions panel of this go to webinar control panel to do that so uh and i'll be looking into all of them and once we get into active q and i'll be sharing your questions to Puneet. so that's one way you can share any input or observation now, another thing I want to do is, uh, as we begin, I'm going to do one small poll to understand about the audience we have here, because that's going to be very useful information for Puneet as well as for me to get a sense of the kind of people we have here. And I can see 30% of you have already voted. So I'll keep this poll on for another few seconds so that all of you could vote. And uh, then I'll share the results as well, right? 71% uh, have already voted thank you so much so last three seconds let me do the reverse countdown to get almost 100 percent responses uh it's three and the final two and the last one thanks everyone let me share results with all of you so we have 20 percent who are students or freshers 27 percent are sales and marketing professionals 20 percent are already to digital marketing and 22% are entrepreneurs or business owners and 12% are other professionals like people who are into HR, IT. Wow, we have a very, very distributed audience and that will make this session even more interesting. So thanks everyone. And uh, without taking more time, over to Puneet. And I'm going to put my video off, right? So Puneet, welcome and thank you so much for taking time to be leading this session for us. I'm looking forward to myself learning a lot from this. Thank you so much, uh, Pradeep and the Digital Vidya team. Uh, if there's some echo on the voice here, please bear with me. Uh, namaste to each one of you on the webinar. And I'm in Bangalore, so I should say namaskara to many of you who are dialing in from Bangalore. Uh, I plan to use the next 25, 30 minutes to take you through 
what marketers have shared as their perspectives for 2018. Uh, there's a lot of content to be covered, so I may breeze through some of the slides. And that's because just we have a, a short span to go through a lot of material. But a lot of this will be available to you post this webinar. And I also have a special offer for many of you on this webinar, which I'll share with you only for you on this webinar later during the webinar. I hope you can see the first slide, which is where I am. It's the 2018 digital marketing part. This is the format of the report. This is how the report looks like. And this is covering the marketing trends um, for 2018 for India. Let me just take you through the background of what, what, what we're trying to achieve. This is the eighth such annual report, which does mean that we have gone across thousands of marketers sharing their perspectives over the last eight years. This is a research team. Uh, I'm sure this will be available to you in the recording format later. So many of you can go through these, these details in slow motion if you or, or record re review in um, uh, at your own leisure. But this is the team which has worked behind it. So needless to say, many man years of efforts have gone into this research work, along with partners like Digital Vidya, who have really helped us get the participation from the marketeers. Puneet, uh, just uh, research has Puneet. been to. Puneet, can you hear me? Can you just yeah. share your screen? Can you just confirm that your screen is shared? You will have an option to do that. Right now, people can hear, and I got one feedback. They can't see your screen. Can you On see now? Uh, I can see as an organizer. So let me just get confirmation from others. Uh, guys, OK, Bhairavi said that she can see the screen. Can others just confirm that? OK, great. Great, Puneet, go ahead. OK, thank you so much. So often research, uh, our main objective is to track uh, marketeers' preferences in India. A lot of data is available in the US market globally, but in India, we found the benchmark for which channel works better, how can you compare best practices that was missing, and that was the intent behind starting often research. We do about five to six industry reports tracking marketeers across verticals in India, including uh, what are the directions uh, it's going towards, and a lot of that can be downloaded from opt-in research. And that's where you can find a link for this research report as well. But moving forward in terms of uh, uh, value first, as uh, Pradeep mentioned, we are in the business of uh, enabling intelligent conversations across channels between uh, the brands and consumers. We believe technology has a role to play in enabling that link between the consumer and the brand, uh, online included. And we have a role to play in that, uh, that we are a platform company, we're a marketing technology platform company along with platforms for AI and bots. Uh, Octane was acquired by uh, a, a Value First last year in April. Uh, and that's why you see Octane Research being reflecting as part of Value First. And this is going very well in terms of the integration within the two companies. Uh, how are we different? Uh, you can go through this later. Essentially, it's about uh, creating success for our customers. And that happens across 1,500 plus enterprise class customers in India in Saudi Arabia, in Middle East, countries like Dubai, and of course, Indonesia, and um, um, definitely in India. Uh, you can go through this in detail, but uh, moving on, uh, this is a little brief about my background. Uh, between the large companies where I worked for, I've been able to create two successful startups and one failure. And I must say that I learned a lot from my failure. This is my email ID. In case you have any questions we cannot take during this webinar, or if you're watching this webinar in recording mode, you can still fire me a question and I'll try to do justice to your query. I'm on Twitter, so if you're uh, watching this in live mode, you can also tweet your questions and I'll try to see if I can post this webinar and take your queries there as well. Uh, let's move on. The hashtag for our uh, research report is uh, hashtag digital 2018. So you can also use that to post your queries. And this is a conversation which will go beyond uh, this webinar, which is a short, um, you know, summary version of uh, the research report. This is the report uh, download link. This is a Google URL, shortened URL. So you can use this to download the copy of the research report that we're referring to. It's about 45 pages plus of insights and detailed charts. I'll be covering some of them. And this is a special for Digital Vidya fans who are on the webinar or watching it later. If you were to email me your uh, full name, mailing address for your office, and uh, just send me across that, and I will be happy to ship you a copy, a print copy, which is a long format, easier to read um, for you um, by postal mail. And this is offer is valid till 10th of February. So if you're watching this before 10th of February, you still have a chance to grab a, a highly prized version of this in print format. And that's my email ID. Uh, what are we covering in this webinar? Uh, what are the asks from marketeers in terms of channels? 
what is the research overview? Have you, have you done this research report? What are the highlights of the research report? And recommendations, and of course, take your questions. This is uh, the brief for the webinar. What is the budget, marketing budget for marketeers in India? What has worked for marketeers in India in 2017? Which are the channels generating highest revenue impact on business? What are the attribution models for calculating ROI? What are the content marketing strategies that have, that have worked for marketers in India in 2017? What are the plans for it in 2018? And what are the new technologies, emerging new technologies, which are impacting the conversation between marketeers and uh, consumers? And what are the top challenges that marketeers face? Uh, this year, we also added a few more questions around, for example, what are the skills marketeers should have to be able to uh, do justice to the role? So if you're many of you students, I believe that 20% of you are uh, budding marketeers. So you should go through that particular part of the research report, which are the skills that marketeers should have in 2017. Uh, 2018 to be able to um, start a or leapfrog your career in digital marketing. There are uh, top highlights of what stood out in our research report: customer acquisition and engagement. And this is a seesaw. We see sometimes customer acquisition becomes the priority for India marketeers. Sometimes it goes to customer engagement. So this is a continuous battle uh, between the two. And in this year, again, social media and email marketing were deemed the most engaging channels from an engagement perspective. What we see historically also is that for demand generation or direct impact on revenue, the top two channels happen to be paid search and, uh, and also email marketing. And for engaging consumers online, it tends to be social media and email marketing. What are the top marketing activities for 2018? Uh, we have got a split this year between B2B marketeers and B2C marketeers in India. Many of you have been asking us for that split between industries and also between the type of marketing. We believe B2B and B2C do have common themes on digital, but the way you execute uh, can be different. So we, this year we've got a split uh, across these two types of uh, categories of marketing activities. Which digital channel delivers the best ROI? Email still continues to be the most favorite uh, digital marketing channel. We have seen that the customer attention across email has uh, gone down. Uh, that is true for all digital marketing channels. The customer attention is getting fragmented across many, many channels. So the time spent on each channel is uh, is being challenged. So that's uh, that's one common thread you will find across all digital channels. What worked for you on Facebook, on Google, on your social feeds earlier on, or email marketing campaigns has to be revised and has to be done in a different fashion if you want to still retain the attention of the consumer because consumer has a lot more channels. We saw a rise of Instagram in the last 20, uh, 24 months, which was not there earlier. So like many other channels, uh, even email, social media, there's a stress on marketers to do better. Uh, calculating ROI has been a challenge. Uh, and uh, in there also, email marketing works. I'll take you through the click attribution model of India marketers, how they look at generating ROI and tracking those, uh, that ROI. But these are the top highlights on page one. and the Next four are these. Content marketing still continues to be an effective medium to get more visibility to the brand. Uh, so that's the preference for content marketing. Uh, in terms of increasing digital marketing investments in 2018, social media continues to be a favorite amongst India marketeers. And uh, they will get the higher, uh, social media marketing will get a higher uh, uh, share of the wallet of spend in 2018 for, from India marketeers. So there are challenges in attributing success uh, on impact on revenue from the social media spend. So that continues to be a concern raised by marketeers also in India. Cross-channel automation platforms, big data analysis, and chatbots and AI are three most promising margins for the Indian market for 2018. And we've always seen a lot of POCs, proof of concept, experimental projects which are being discussed in 2017, which have been discussed in 2017. A lot more funding will come towards those projects in 2018. Challenges for 2018, justifying revenue impact for high social media spends and proving ROI and digital marketing. And I, I alluded to this earlier. How do you justify higher spends on a certain channel, which seems to generate a lot of customer engagement, but there's a broken link. Uh, how can you justify a customer engagement and uh, leading towards a higher revenue impact that continues to be an opportunity of growth and also challenge for India marketers. That being said, the research report has uh, gotten the uh, coverage from 350 plus uh, marketing leaders in India across all of these um, uh, verticals. So it's pretty well placed. 
except for it has a bias towards IT and ITES. Also to put on record, because this is done by us and we play in the digital one-to-one -one space, mostly email, SMS, alerts, etc. There's a bell, there could be a bias towards these channels because we're reaching out to our uh, customers through our customers' prospects, our ecosystem. But we have also six other industry partners with us on this one. So hopefully this is a direction this report is much more accurate than perhaps uh, um, um, accurately in terms of absolute value. You may agree or disagree with the highlights of the report. This is some of the brands that we used to have the company of uh, marketeers brands for participating. Every year we get about 250 to 300 marketeers participating in this Pony. outreach, making it the largest brand. Okay. Puneet, can you hear me? Uh, I'll skip through some of this. You can see this later in the research report as well. We, uh, uh, it's, it's got a really heterogeneous mix of marketeers, B2B, B2C, management level, and region wise participation. It's a very healthy mix of uh, marketing uh, participation uh, for this research report. And uh, when we ask this question about primary marketing goal for 2018, customer acquisition continues to be number one goal uh, for uh, 2018 as well for India marketeers. Uh, what are the top three marketing activities in 2017 that they uh, spent money on? Social media marketing for B2C. And uh, if you look at the B2B, for them, the website overhaul and making it responsive and more uh, sort of uh, uh, enable for the consumer journey, customer journey was the highlight. So a little different difference between the two, but continues to be, uh, if you look at email marketing, that was the number two uh, top priority for B2B. Uh, surprisingly, that's not on the top three for uh, uh, B2C companies or B2C marketers as per this uh, research uh, report. What are the Puneet, top three ma primary marketing activities? And that's where you'll see social media, website, and email continuing to be in the top three uh, and followed by search. So these are this is the split across, um, this is a trending across many years uh, of preference in terms of primary marketing activities. So this report also gives you the snapshot of trending of how the preferences are changing or evolving over the last few years. So you have this data which can give you that analysis. Which is the industry preference for digital channel? Which is the marketer's preference for digital channel by industry? We see for retail and distribution, it's social media marketing. For BFSI, it is email marketing. And e-commerce is uh, social media marketing again. So when you go through this research report in depth, you'll see that different sectors and marketers from different sectors, different industries, have a different bias towards some specific channel. Very interesting fact that we found this year, and analysis that you'll find in the research report as well. In terms of digital marketing budget, uh, what is the percentage growth you'll see in digital marketing budget? You can have a split here between B2B and B2C. In the B2B space, 35% uh, uh, marketers have said that the 11 to 30% will be the digital marketing budget uh, uh, in, um, in, in 20, uh, was the budget in 2017. And for B2C, they have said 39% have said it was 11 to 30% of the marketing budget for digital spends. How will this change for 2018? 46% say there will be increase of over 11% over last year for digital uh, marketing spend or online marketing spend. So this continues to have a momentum towards higher spends and investments in digital marketing uh, channels. Where would you increase your marketing budget in 2018? When we ask this question to marketers in India, social media marketing, search, website development continue to have a healthy rise of the budget. For email specifically, they said 40% uh, of them said that there'll be increase in marketing budgets uh, for, for 2018. When we ask this question about which digital channel generates the highest, best ROI for you, return on investment in terms of revenue, uh, email marketing continues to be uh, a leading channel. If you look at B2B, it's email marketing. If you look at uh, uh, B2C, we have a different picture, which is a paid search. So interesting split here. And uh, when we ask this question about what are your challenges uh, from a marketing perspective for 2018, this graph has a very interesting uh, data. Proving ROI on digital marketing continues to be uh, a big challenge. Uh, and this, this continues to for 2018 as well. And when we double click on uh, what are the attribution models you have for measuring ROI, uh, the marketers in India report first click and last click being the two top uh, attribution model, uh, essentially when you were discovered by the consumer and uh, when it led to a purchase. And in between many touch points or nudge points may happen and those are not getting right coverage from uh, India marketers. So click attribution model, we have a little bit of a skew towards uh, first and last click. 
what are the challenges in click attribution when we asked this question they said well we don't have technology to track across all attribution so we are just focusing on few you can go through this in detail in the research report when we asked this question on how do you plan to maximize customer engagement or consumer engagement in 2018 this is what we hear which is email campaigns and social media updates should be helping us do a lot more engagement and continue to drive that part of the uh, marketing um, the, uh, marketing um, uh, engagement uh, when we ask about content marketing tool which are the content marketing tool for india marketers which work well social media blogs and newsletters are in the top two and this continues to be the trend for the last 3 years we started asking this question only from 2016 onwards so this is how it pans out in terms of how content marketing tools are effective and which ones are effective how do you track your campaign success so most of marketers are using analytics software with tracking codes and um, some of them are still out there looking for you know how to improve this but clearly open rates for email uh, or, or digital campaigns calculating the ratio of user signups and registration rates via that campaign also happens to be one but analytics software with tracking codes Uh, utm codes or jump ids seems to be the most favorite way of tracking campaign success and click stream analysis we'll agree that not all clicks are the same some clicks are more equal than others and how some clicks from some channels yield better uh, revenue and better conversion is one place where marketers are improving year on year in india how do you plan to scale up your engagement consumer engagement and again you'll see email social playing a larger role across both b2b and b2c When we move to uh, how social media helps your marketing efforts overall, if social media does not lead to uh, higher performance in terms of uh, business results revenues, in terms of revenues, how do, does it help your marketing? And this is where it is engaging with customers, increasing online traffic, uh, and generating leads is forty percent. Forty-eight percent of marketers have said, "Look, it does help us generate leads." so but engaging with customer seems to be the biggest effect of social media uh, for the larger marketing efforts of a brand in the indian marketplace digital marketing activities likely to increase in 2018 a lot more money going into social media we also saw the chart uh, year on year how this is going to be and this is where it gets a split between b2b and b2c the numbers on your left the blue numbers are uh, b2b and the number in green the split is in the b2c model so social media marketing 68% b2c marketers have felt uh, that's where they'll increase a uh, lot more activities in 2018 and 60% social uh, 60% of b2b marketers the b2b marketers have said social media marketing will be seeing an increase uh, that's where the preference is in terms of 2018 from a b2b or b2c perspective content continues to be a, a, a arsenal in the strong arsenal in the india marketers uh, repertoire increasing in brand awareness is one of the reasons why uh, content is being deployed online which are the effective content marketing tools as we discussed earlier also blogs and newsletters and social media continue to be the top two um, effective marketing tools what are your outlook what is your outlook for new technologies in 2018 when we ask marketers where are they likely to put money and efforts in 2018 for evaluating newer technologies which are impacting how consumers engage with brands this is what we heard that cross channel marketing automation which is essentially how do you align all your campaigns with the consumer journey on all your digital assets uh, there is a breed of technologies called cross channel marketing automation and and that's where they plan to invest a lot more so far we have seen a lot of silos there are email campaign softwares and the social media campaign software and there is tracking codes on web analytics the idea is to bring it all together and automate it so the consumer gets a cohesive consistent experience uh, as per his preference and interest across the consumer journey from in, from discovery to interest to purchase and post purchase the same cycle continues we have seen a increase in interest in big data tools and analysis you know you would agree that digital generates a lot of data from the consumer um, um, sort of preferences part and how do you analyze the data in real time and how do you deploy it for consumer success or engaging higher is one area we'll see a lot more interest for your technologies and if you look at ai and bots specifically that's where um, you'll see 45% of marketers in india have said for 2018 they'll be evaluating how bots can help them um, with their um, consumer engagements for consumer um, Um, sort of uh, campaigns. So we asked this question, but how can AI and bots help you uh, in marketing? And they have said increasing brand engagement through personal experience 
is where uh, we'll not do campaigns which are just uh, spray and pray and one size fits all, but we'll do customized uh, uh, prefer preferences driven campaigns and that should help us um, drive better ROI. And when we ask about best use of AI enabled chatbots in marketing, uh, this is where it comes by increasing brand engagement through enhanced and personalized experiences, but also importantly, gaining consumer insights. So one of my, um, I wouldn't say peeves, but one of my pet peeves has been that in India, we've used digital marketing mostly for pushing our content and pushing our messages. And we have not been effective listeners on, uh, on, on digital media, online, um, rented media, your own media, social media, email, etc. And this is where I think this is positive that they feel that chatbots can help them gain higher consumer insights. This is the question which may be important for uh, marketing students who plan to have a digital marketing career or progress your digital marketing career from the initial stages to the next level. Crucial skills to be effective marketeer. This is the question we asked the marketing uh, fraternity in India. And number one and number two, actually, if you look at both the uh, factors, crucial skills, it's about ability to embrace change. How fast can you unlearn what worked for you last quarter last year? And how fast can you spot newer opportunities and adapt your uh, overall strategy very quickly? So it's not about which channel, it's not about uh, you know landing a campaign more effectively. It's just about there'll be a lot of change happening around you. And how can you embrace change and adapt to that change? That soft skill seems to be uh, one of the most important crucial skills uh, to be an effective marketeer as shared by 350 plus uh, leading marketeers of India. We went deeper into email marketing challenges for 2017 and I'll take you through quickly into this because I think we have 10 minutes to go before I take up your questions. But uh, increasing click-through rates and con uh, conversion rates continues to be a big challenge uh, for marketeers, was a challenge last year. And uh, when we ask this question, how effective have your email marketing campaigns been? Uh, somewhat effective, effective, and very effective are the three areas where we see almost 80% of marketeers saying yes, it still works for them. Though the effectiveness is up for question because there, are, there is a lot of churn happening and the consumer engagement is uh, going towards a, a specific type of email marketing. If you're doing one mailer to everybody, that doesn't work anymore. But customized, personalized, triggered based contextual email campaigns seem to be still driving a higher ratio of open rates and uh, conversions. What are some special programs to engage customers on email marketing? And this is where we see welcome programs getting a higher mention than we would have had uh, earlier. When we ask this question about how do you plan to reduce spam complaints and in inbox clutter and uh, get a lot more of your emails into the inbox, personalization and targeting uh, seems to be the number one technique uh, which is being reported by India marketeers. That for me was a quick snapshot of uh, what are the highlights we have seen from uh, um, the research report. To ask me my take as a personal journey into digital and as someone who meets maybe 100 plus marketeers every quarter in person because of my role and responsibility and being part of the marketing fraternity. I would say the four top four um, challenges and opportunities is about uh, the fragmentation of uh, attention for consumer across digital. Interestingly, we saw uh, despite earlier writing off SMS as a marketing channel because of the smartphone penetration and uh, the hyperlinks becoming a reality on SMS, also on smartphone. We are seeing increasingly that some marketeers are saying, look, there's no clutter now on SMS. So can I try effectively some of the techniques on SMS? So I'm seeing that almost all channels uh, consumer is engaging across. Um, uh, in the last 12 to 18 months, we've become the number one country in the world for mobile video consumption. So that's a brand new category. So uh, today, you, as a marketer, you cannot say, this is where I'll put all my money or these are the only two top two channels because every channel there is, is getting a, a buy of the share of attention from the consumers. So every channel has to work better. And as marketers, we have to innovate. Attribution models continue to be a, a big challenge. And unless we solve that equation of uh, click attribution models uh, consistently across our marketing campaigns, we seem to have different ROI models for different channels. And if you were reporting to a CXO or a board level uh, team for high, getting higher budgets for your marketing spend. I think we have to ultimately 
roll up every metrics towards revenue impact. We cannot just say social is for engagement and affiliate email marketing is for generating leads. I think ultimately for a business, investments in digital have to have mid-term, long-term impact on pipeline, revenue, consumer pull. So attribution models become very important. I think that's where we have to do a lot of work as marketers in India. We have also seen that a lot of digital campaigns for brand awareness are coming online and it's not purely for creating short term revenue impact. Uh, last um, fourth point I would raise to you is that uh, the offer led co consumer campaigns on digital are sort of beginning to taper off because marketers have had a severe marketing budget crunch from an offers perspective, especially it was led by e-commerce companies in 2014, 2015, 2016. In 2017, we have seen a lot of content-led, storytelling-led digital campaigns. So, you know, that that's that's what seems to be a, a big factor coming out. That how do you create willing content, good content to engage in their consumers consistently? Uh, that seems to be the fourth point I would like to highlight. So these are four uh, takeaways from my perspective, my personal experience when I talk to uh, marketers, CMOs in my interactions. So with that, uh, I'm sure we can have a few questions. There are some questions that you already have queued up. Um, as I shared with you, the PDF version of this research report is available for you, soft copy on the Optin Research website. I did share the uh, link with you, and you can hashtag your comments with Digital 2018 on your Twitter timeline or Facebook, and we'll pick up those conversations and respond back to you. Uh, for the uh, for the digital with your fans here, you can drop me an email with your full name, uh, postal address, and I'll be happy to uh, ship you a print copy of the research report at your office address. So that's where it is. Uh, let's see if you have specific questions that I can uh, I can answer. Uh, but I've enjoyed my time with you on this webinar so far, and thank you, Pradeep, for the opportunity. Great. Uh, thanks, uh, Puneet. Puneet, can you hear me? I can hear you, Pradeep. Yes. Great. Thank you so much, Puneet. Uh, I think very interesting and insightful data and uh, love the extensiveness at which you have covered this. Uh, for sure, I think one of the surprising elements I have seen for many people is email marketing leading in digital for years, though. And we have been experiencing it for almost nine years at Digital Vidya. But I know if we ask someone, is email marketing effective today? Given the amount of spam happening today, people don't believe in that. But this report has further validated uh, people who are doing well in digital that you know email continues to lead. Now, uh, before we get into specific Q&A, I think one of the things, Puneet, I want to ask, I don't know if we have that data here or not, is along with email, we see social media as one of the leading channels where Indian marketers are focusing on and look forward to even in future. Uh, now, social media is huge, comprises of various channels. And uh, do you have any data about within social media? What is a priority? How much of contribution in terms of success from social media comes through advertisements, especially Facebook ads, which is becoming big, you know, at very fast pace. So if you have any insights about uh, going deeper into social media, that would be, I think, useful. Because right now, we are looking at social media as a black box. <clears throat> True that. So clearly on um, social media, we have seen that the organic reach of brand pages has reduced and that's because of the algorithm shift by social media companies and platforms. So I have a different take on this, the, the, the universe. So when you go to social media and put your post out there or if you promote it, you're actually on a third party platform. You're renting that platform for putting your message out. And that's where uh, video content has become very effective. If you talk to folks like Ashish Chopra of EasyGo, one of the leading um, video content uh, creators from India on Facebook, uh, you will see that video content has been really off the charts on Facebook. Original video content which you host on Facebook has been very effective as a content uh, strategy on Facebook. If you ask me what are the banner open rates and click-through rates, uh, we have not gone into that level of detail into this research report, though you'll find how Facebook or social media can help you uh, with your overall uh, marketing strategy. But that's a good point. Perhaps we should follow this up with, we do about four or five research projects across the year. So maybe we can do a study around within Facebook or within social media, what it tends to work. But clearly offer-led campaigns on um, social media have reduced and a lot of content-led or cause-led uh, um, campaigns are working more effectively, especially in the video format on, uh, on, on social media. 
Got it, Punita. I'm sure I can relate to video what you've shared in terms of importance of video, especially I think even mobile is already so big. A uh, very related question which you have partly answered is uh, asked by Lovelyne. Given the prominence of social media in ROI of digital campaigns, as highlighted by this report as well, how does the latest Facebook algorithm change the impact of, uh, in terms of ROI for brands? So you'll have to plan for a lot more uh, promotional spend on Facebook. Uh, that continues to be, um, if you go the traditional Facebook posts, which are text posts with some hyperlinks to your website, those kind of, um, campaign outreach on Facebook will continue to be more expensive if you're a brand led page. However, if your user community shares uh, your content out there, uh, if you have stickiness on your brand page and your followers uh, start sharing those uh, campaigns on their uh, personal pages, that will not impact the virality or outreach of the messages. Also, Facebook has created newer uh, content engagement, uh, engagement uh, tools, for example, Facebook Live or events. Now, these are also very effective in reaching out to audiences. So on one hand, on the traditional um, text-based messaging or uh, uh, ads or banners or offer-led things, there would be a challenge in terms of organic reach. But there are newer tools available on Facebook through which you could see if you can amplify your outreach. But clearly, if you're planning to have your exclusive strat strategy on digital exclusively on Facebook, you will be looking to spend more money to reach out to less number of uh, consumers than you did in 2017. Great, Puneet. Uh, another question, Puneet, I want to ask is about, we have not seen organic search or especially SEO gaining any focus here, which to me is a big surprise. Uh, and uh, I think it continues to be the one of the most important and most effective mediums. So would you like to share, is that covered in some way or is that part of content marketing or uh, what is your take on SEO? By the way, while I'm asking this question to Puneet, guys, I've shared with all of you uh, our next webinar, which is on next Friday. So this today, since tomorrow is Republic Day, we are not doing this webinar on Friday, which we normally do. Today we are doing on Thursday. But next Friday, we have this session on the secret to SEO success in 2018 which we do almost every year about, you know, what is the key to success in the next year. I've shared the link with all of you. I think this is one of the most uh, engaging and uh, popular webinars we've been doing every year. So I've shared the link because I'm very, very sure personally that SEO continues to be most one of the most important channels. So Puneet, would you share some insights about the role of organic search uh, for digital? Uh, I see the universe of digital marketing in two ways, and I alluded to it earlier, rented platforms where you pay money to get featured and being visible, and your own platforms. Uh, and organic search is part of your own platform, what you do on the content on your pages, how you're indexed, how the links are to your website. I don't see organic SEO go lower in ranking or priority, but I think uh, the bias towards spends may be the reason why on organic search, companies may not be spending as much as much towards the paid campaigns and hence there may be a bias in our research report. But uh, search and especially organic search is not going down uh, the preferences for marketers. And in my view, organic search produces better results when those visitors land up at your uh, page in terms of both bounce rates or uh, even for conversion. Uh, but how do you scale organic search is where marketers tend to invest some of their marketing dollars to increase the, the visibility. But clearly organic search is not reducing in terms of importance as, as per my personal opinion, though the, the, the research report may have a bias towards marketing spends and that's where the organic search spends tend to be limited. Uh, but for me personally, search is one of the, organic search is one of the areas where in my business as a marketer for value first and also for opt-in, we tend to uh, invest a lot more energy and uh, play with content, but there are also newer tools coming up uh, on organic search to create a lot more. I think marketers are shifting from just keyword, um, creating keyword mixes or create keyword cloud towards more campaigns, which are storytelling and cause led, which will identify them higher and get higher discoverability on search, uh, search scores. So content clearly is one place where uh, you can boost up your organic search. And I don't see organic search going down in terms of preferences still continues to be number one in terms of strongest word of mouth 
um, um, campaign sort of uh, channels. I, we do not have a very deep cut into organic search, and I'm glad uh, you are doing this event next uh, Friday. So I'll be dialing in as well to learn more about how search is changing. But algorithms are changing on Google as well. But there's a lot of search that's currently happening, and I would still say, in my view, as a as a chief marketing officer of a brand, I would call a search in the top uh, top two or three marketing of, um, uh, channels for digital marketers in India. Got it, Punita. Thanks for clarifying that. Guys, I've shared the link with all of you. I would personally recommend that each one of you not just sign up to the webinar right now, but make sure that you attend it. It's going to be one of the you know most interesting ones. Uh, another question uh, Punit is asked by Trinetra. What is the role of influencer marketing going forward according to you? Uh, you know, we have buzzwords called influencer marketing and uh, a lot of uh, bloggers and content creators have become influencers and uh, I have a healthy disrespect for that. I think every consumer who gets your content, views your content can be influencer. So segregating some of your users into higher influencer category just because they have a number of followers which looks fairly aggressive, millions of followers on Instagram or social media, other channels may not be a true reflection of the potential of the conversion from campaigns. We have seen a lot of investment that marketers have done on influencer marketing in the last two years. Uh, you know, the, the jury is out how much of that translates into um, overall revenue impact for brands. Some brands tend to have that you know, higher in terms of in terms of conversion. If you're into travel or fashion, um, high spend consumer, maybe that's where it may work. But influencer marketing in terms of selecting the audience who consumes your content is your fan, biggest, strongest fan. I think that will not go anywhere. Uh, if you look at influencer marketing, the way we have used the word, it's about celebrities or people who have higher influence or followers, getting them to plug your messages versus if you look at word of mouth. So how many recommendations do you have on Google reviews? How many recommendations do you have on a product if you're pitching on Amazon? So those recommendations i would also plug them as influencer marketing and i think that's that's pretty useful but in the way we have used influencer marketing tactics which is to get a celebrity brand or celebrity on online to vouch for or validate for your uh, brand i think i think that's where i have a somewhat of a discomfort got it i think very well said uh, your fans your customers are really the the best influencers and especially if you look at you know the value of organic reach even the value of twitter going down uh, it has become more a buzzword which is more used or more misused than used but i think for contextually influencer marketing would remain and you, you just need to focus your attention on who is the influencer great puni uh, another question which is being asked by devanshu is can you put some insight on how to make a successful content marketing strategy? So Puneet, given there are many more questions and we can spend a lot of time in talking about strategy, I would want you to share some of the key points uh, about you know, strategy when it comes to content marketing so that we can cover rest as well. We've seen a decline in the offers-based, promotion-based campaigns. So 2014, 2015, I have 50% off, 20% off, uh, one day sale, those campaigns on email marketing platforms, because that's what we come from as an experiential company, we can talk a lot more about it, to more about sustained engagement. So I'll, I'll give an example. Uh, there would be an example of an insurance company looking to renew your premium. And once you've renewed your premium for another year, they'll keep silent for the next 10 months. And before the next renewal date, they'll start firing up on all engines and everything will, will get activated. And if you don't sign up within, let's say, 15 days of renewal date, they'll start sending you offers and discounts. They've realized that this is not leading to sort of engagement across many, many more months. And if you just engage in those two months in the year, the consumer is likely to go somewhere else. So sustain engagements, wellness, newsletters, uh, you know, bringing them for workshops into uh, hospitals or clinics or a phone call once in a quarter to ask them how are they doing and uh, how happy are they with their insurance policy. These are some of the things that, that's working well. So that's one part which is a brand has to consistently reach out to consumers and in a non-threatening, non-aggressive, offer-led way. And that's where content marketing continues to play a part. I believe in within content marketing, if you look at the form of content, 
the user generated content is definitely of the higher quality uh, their videos their selfies their own hashtag that seems to be the most potent form of uh, uh, campaigns you can do on content video content is off the charts in fact uh, because of the video consumption we're doing on mobile devices if i'm a content marketer today i would look for creating content including a webinar like this if you look at this content category for digital vidya i'm sure you get a lot more traffic to your assets and queries because of these uh, content that you create so you are a best example one of the good examples in india on how to use webinars every week every month to drive content towards your uh, to, towards your brand so video is off the chart it's continue it will continue to be a great asset for marketers and in terms of theme for the content i would say story based or or or, or say cause based brands stand for something no two brands are the same they stand for something unique as we call them as usp how do you translate that usp into say a story a, a, a case a use a, a sort of a cause which can be engaged across the year that i think for me will not go out of fashion fundamentals will remain the same of storytelling cause marketing the channels may change the form may change it may be video today it may be stories in written form tomorrow but that's how we see i see content playing out so our research report for example is a great example of content marketing like your webinar series so these are great ways to engage with the community and when you're doing content marketing there are two ways to look at it one is what is the story you want to tell what is the brand differentiation what do you stand for uh, people talk about the wtf fact you know what what is the factor about you which is different about your brand what's the story and second associating that with the communities or uh, cause groups which can help you uh, when i'm doing content marketing and this research report for last 8 years is one such example which has led to creation of octane as a brand and now value first we we have thought about thought about this content program from the marketer's perspective not where we like to position ourselves so if you put yourself in the shoes of the community you're trying to serve and use content as a strategy to engage with them i think we'll get a lot more uh, sort of engagement for our messaging and also conversion later it's a long long tail effect it's the marketing funnel which is about being discovered leading towards uh, interest and nudging them towards some engagement and of course leading to purchase this is true for b2b and it's also true for b2b to c a lot of the content we place out there helps us get qualified leads because people read our research reports they follow us on our social media and that leads to more interest towards uh, physical events like yesterday we did an event in bangalore for for marketers in person so because of the content approach towards marketing it yields to much higher attention from our community which is the marketers we we target correct great puni uh puni there are two questions related to career probably i can take up myself and but would be useful for others ashwajit has said that he has 17 years experience in customer service and retention and usage monitoring for a telecom company and for last one year he is into app marketing for service related installs i want to make a career in digital marketing and start uh, again my age is 42 so shojit uh, great question and thanks for being part of our digital marketing certification program now uh, as you know i continuously say uh, we've seen significant interest of professionals across various fields into digital marketing given the amount of years of experience you have i have two suggestions uh, one you don't have completely irrelevant experience uh, customer service definitely is even in digital one of the key areas along with your experience about app marketing and what you have acquired as digital marketing skills i think you should rather than positioning yourself as a hardcore digital marketer because then you are giving away a lot of wealth of experience and domain knowledge you have you should look at senior roles where along with your experience about customer service digital becomes an important for example social crm or customer service over digital media and preferably if you look at industries which are which is telecom and related then along with your previous experience your domain knowledge is going to be valued and of course your uh, newly acquired skills become useful and as you get more and more deeper into digital your profile can have even more involvement of digital and i can see that happening for a lot of people who have years of experience uh, shifting not into digital i would say shifting towards digital so ji that that's my suggestion to you uh, one similar question we have about mba in digital marketing versus 
digital marketing certification and Imesh has asked now that I just shared you know blog post which we had done exactly on that area I can share with all of you and Imesh, uh, I think it's one way while you can talk between them they are not exclusive as well uh, if you get an MB admission in one of the great management institutes you must go for that but if you are not going to get a great uh, you know education in terms of management institute uh, then i think in terms of spending maybe two years amount of money you would spend rather than doing that acquire you know practical skills in digital marketing and i'm assuming you want to build career in marketing say mba uh, and of course we have specifically asked mba in digital marketing so anyways you are considering marketing as a uh, background right so if you are getting great uh, admission in a great institute you must go for it and even when you are there i think digital marketing assuming you want to build career in digital uh, in marketing digital is going to be one of the key areas and i'm sharing this based on our experience with a lot of im graduates as well uh, for one of the batches of one of the ims uh, part of the students were part of our programs and others were not and those who were part of our digital marketing certification program many got many more interview opportunities than their peers so it's it's already you know writing is on the wall that digital is a critical skill you need to acquire right and Imesh, i hope it answered for you now uh Puneet, another interesting question is uh, asked by kunjal about uh, role of virtual reality for travel tourism industry uh, I, before you take on, I can share one very recent example, uh, Kunjal, you might be aware. If not, you can check about Exigo's latest uh, app uh, on, you know, identifying your coach about train. So I just saw it yesterday, was seeing the video about that. So that's, I think, probably one of the latest examples of VR being used in travel. But Puneet, would you want to share any experience, any example you are aware about the role of VR in travel? Still early stage, a lot of uh, lot of action on that front, both on VR and AVR, augmented virtual reality as well. So a lot of startups, young energy, a lot of new applications being rolled out. So I don't have definitive example of customer success or uh, consumer success in India right now on VR and AVR, but a lot of interest, a lot of startups. I met a couple of companies this week in Bangalore. I know last week, uh, one startup from Delhi called Skanta, they won the shark uh, um, um, i think uh, award in san francisco they were one of the few companies from india who landed up in san francisco based on nomination by many of the startup uh, members so a lot of things happening but still in the i think pilot slash production stage i uh, would love to see how in 2018 and got it great puni uh, guys we still have some time and i also want to share with you that we are going to share with you the recording of this session as well. Now, uh, before we part away, definitely one of the things I want to do is, I want to take your feedback about today's session. And I personally request all of you to share about your experience. And while we are continuing with the q and I think this would be useful for us, right? Uh, Puneet, while people are responding to this poll, another question being asked by Mukesh is, how to calculate ROI of AdWords campaign? That's a one. That's a great question, Mukesh. Any campaign you do, AdWords or social media or email marketing, I'm assuming that you're putting those uh, tracking codes. The easiest one is Google Analytics UTM codes, or if you're using uh, you know, sort of advanced software from the likes of uh, Comscore, etc. You could also have other tracking codes. But tracking codes is very important uh, for uh, for managing the effectiveness of your campaigns. And if you're doing tracking codes, then you can actually see in the analytics software. What kind of clicks are coming from which campaign, which AdWord campaign, etc. That's one. And that, that's a starting point, which is to have UTM code for all digital outreach on the links, hyperlinks, which tells you by which campaign, which day, what is the impact on, I'm assuming you have a website where you're bringing people into as a traffic. But the second and third part, which is where I think we're missing out on the conversion um, sort of uh, complexity is that how is that click that came from an AdWords campaign different from the ad click that came from an email campaign? And once you have these guys as, as home paid visitors or landing up on a particular microsite, how is their click stream analysis going towards the final goal? If your final goal is conversion into purchase online, if you've got 100 uh, clicks on an email campaign landing up on your home page, going to a shopping basket and converting into X number of orders. 
how is that different from doing adwords campaign so i would not look at adwords campaign roi in isolation i think that's where india marketers may be missing some of the best practices globally which is to combine all the clicks from campaigns adwords facebook email sms and then see on a dashboard how that's panning out that's the way i would look at improving the adword efficiency also and not just in isolation this is the problem also with channels like email where marketers are just focused on open rates and click through rates whereas the click stream analysis of how that click lands up on your website and what is the conversion into the actual goal for you if it's a purchase how is that different from other clicks from other channels both in terms of quantity of conversion and also quality of conversion so in some ad word campaigns you may have less number of orders converted on your e-commerce website but each order value could be higher so are you doing that level of click stream analysis from the interest click to nudge trial observation and then coming back to buy i think that would be for me would be a better way to look at any campaign analysis from a spend perspective great puni uh <clears throat> another question being asked by shubhojit is for a new e-commerce company in clothing what are the top 3 channels should we use for awareness and leads and do you have any research on benchmarking conversion rate for each channel oh that's a, that's a webinar by itself <laughs> um, if you, if you are a clothing company i think your best category is video content because that has the engagement and if you can make it facebook friendly in terms of square format and not wide format that could be one uh, the stickiness of uh, consumer engagement will be only i mean as per the marketers research will be on email and on social media uh, so that's where you could look at driving some of your campaigns for stickiness in my view organic reach takes time building up your own email subscriber list will take time building up your own fan following will take time in the meantime you could try up with publishers who are like minded have your audiences so first thing i would do if you're defining your brand how is it different what's your story of the brand I think we should spend a lot more time creating that content around that part why should i care about your clothing brand compared to many other brands or many other websites that's one part and second once you identified your niche then go for that community where you can park your message it could be groups it could be whatsapp groups it could be clubs hobbies and that's the way to organically grow it once you identified a certain segment and you are able to seed your campaigns always do ab testing of course that goes without saying and then whatever works for you see if you can put more money behind it and amplify it because you're starting out you'll have uh, limited resources budgets in terms of inorganic spends paid campaigns on social but the category you are in nothing visual media video instagram would be my preference of going i do not have a cut only by e-commerce but that's one of the reports we plan to launch in next 6 uh, to 8 weeks on optim research great puneet puneet we have lots of question guys it's already 4 so we would can we puneet can we extend the q and a time a bit i'm all yours pradeep it's a wonderful okay, opportunity great. we can take thanks, five minutes puneet yeah thanks and guys i can see a lot of you asking questions about how can i acquire certain skills i want to build a career so uh, while i am continuing with the q and a uh, what i'm going to do is i have launched another poll about your interest in mastering digital marketing so uh, we would love to know your interest in acquiring the relevant skills and then we would be able to guide you how to do that so i will appreciate if you can respond and i know many of you are the participants of our program so you can share that as a choice as well uh, puneet another question we have is are there any free tools for social media competitor analysis free is worth the price that's my fundamental uh, belief in marketing i i would not be able to quote you off hand but if somebody leaves their message i'll be happy to ask my other marketing uh, team members in my team and come back to you there are few tools available that we use but uh, competitor analysis I, i i would not be able to uh, give you a name off hand immediately okay guys so what i will do or uh, i'm sharing a link for tools list of so top social media marketing tools some of them would help you do that and uh, funny what i would suggest is many of these tools have a trial version uh, that may be limited by certain features so you can try that but yeah i think you can explore and because different features of the tools may help you differently and then you can choose i've shared the link with all of you uh, ria says we have plethora of digital platforms for marketing are there any tips or ideas to choose the right platforms cut down expenditure 
on experimentation phase two. Riya, I think probably uh, the input as you see from this report is uh, email marketing is one of the most relevant channels. Now, what you have to do is you have to look for your, you know, timelines compared, you know, aligned with your goals. For example, you want to generate quick results. You don't have a choice much but to spend on advertisements. But if you want to get really long time, long term sustainable value, you have to start investing now for organic channels, especially SEO, content marketing. So that by the time they are mature, you you reach to that stage. So otherwise, I think if you look at definitely email marketing is one of the key channels. And again, it takes time to build relevant subscriber list. But if you continue to nurture that, as shared by this report as well, that is definitely one of the great channels. Uh, Devanshu says, how effective brand brief and maintenance plan could be to ace in digital marketing? So Devan, uh, Puneet, brand brief, how effective is in terms of you know that they want to about uh, how effective is have clarity on you know your brand brief i think that's what they want to mention well oh, absolutely i think on digital uh, because it's, it's like an ocean you have so much of um, audience available to you having a clear understanding of what your brand stands for the attributes and why would a consumer care about your brand is far more important actually it's important even in traditional media because you have advertising spends that you that go after but in digital i think you have the tools available so brief is important for both offline online but here you have the tools available to navigate your journey in terms of 24 by 7. so if you're an fmcg marketeer or if you're a traditional marketeer the advantage of tools you have and the, the platforms dashboard you have is what makes it so fascinating you can analyze the data in real time you can look at consumer engagement in real time and being able to sort of modify your uh, spends is where I think uh, there's a lot more opportunity for marketers. So in terms of uh, brand brief, I think it's as exhaustive as you would like to have in the traditional media, but defining the audience and uh, defining those factors for ROI success is, I think uh, that, that's what I would add on to a brand brief. Great. Uh, Puneet, what, another question asked by a couple of people is about WhatsApp for marketing and Lately, we have seen WhatsApp launching the business app, even in India, I think, yes, day before yesterday. So what would you like to share about the opportunity of WhatsApp for marketing? Well, WhatsApp has a premise of um, no commercial messaging. That's how it started. Uh, so a lot of consumers have gone to WhatsApp platform because of the great ease of use of platform and a lot of community, a lot of other folks being on WhatsApp. WhatsApp has become sort of a, a mini standard in many ways for instant messaging between people and groups. But two things have happened. One, it has never been a commercial platform. So how will consumers respond to commercial messaging or some messages being promoted? The, the jury is out there. Uh, and, uh, and second is a lot of clutter on WhatsApp. Uh, I have been new to WhatsApp journey. I joined WhatsApp only a year back and I'm already part of 200 groups. And about three months back, I had to mute the notifications from WhatsApp. So it's become another channel for, for me to engage with my audience. I know people who are many, many of us who are on all of WhatsApp. So how will this transition happen uh, from being a no commercial platform to now seeding some commercial messages? We have to wait and watch. Uh, clearly, it'll have an impact. Uh, but will it become just another channel? And how will WhatsApp monetize? Because they have a lot of pressure from Facebook to monetize. I believe they paid $14 billion to acquire WhatsApp. So at some level, there'll be fine balance. But marketers are very excited. I don't think consumers are, are that excited right now. Uh, but I believe for marketers, you've got to have a fine balance. As I rightly said earlier also, having your message on rented platforms. WhatsApp doesn't belong to you. Your email list is yours. Phone list of subscribers is yours. Your website is your asset. Your blog is your asset. The video you create is your asset. So owned assets, the, it takes longer to do organic reach, but there's a stickiness of organic, which is higher and people would love to come back. So I think the debate between rented and uh, owned platforms is where it is. I, I see WhatsApp as another rented platform and uh, it's proprietary. So if you want to switch from WhatsApp to something else, you'll have a difficulty later on, but it's an exciting uh, area to be and see how this pans out. Great, Puneet. Uh, we can take, uh, I think, maybe one or two more questions. Puneet, what is the role of marketing analytics in the world of digital? 
I'm glad you asked this question, Pradeep, because uh, somebody asked you also earlier, which are the domains, which are the skills in digital that one should try to build if you're switching a career to digital or if you're new to digital, or should you have MBA versus certification in digital? On digital marketing, we're looking for two types of marketeers broadly, and this is where this question plays out beautifully. One is the storytellers, uh, people who are creative, can craft stories, content, communication, human stories, hero stories, stickiness around cause marketing, how you different. So that, that, that skill is important. Equally important skill is the data analysis, big data, data scientists. So I'm beginning to see a lot of our mathematical wizards being part of digital marketing teams. And because digital creates so much of data that you have to process and you have to make sense of, look for trends and automate that in real time. Historically, what has happened in marketing is that you had a repos repository of customer data and you would pull reports, analyze them in Excel or dashboards. But on digital, you have to process that in real time and personalize the consumer experience while they're engaging with you on a platform, could be a website. So it adds to a different level of complexity, both from a quality of data analysis and also the quantity of data analysis. You're not used to terabytes of consumer data available to you in, in real time. So we need a lot more marketing talent in terms of data science and analytics, which can help us improve consumer engagement, conversion, and the entire thing about clickstream analysis. My marketing friends who are good storytellers struggle with that part of digital marketing skills, which is the data science. So huge potential. And I, I struggle to hire good talent in my marketing team, which has an interesting background in data and also understands marketing. So huge opportunity, if you ask me, for some of you who are interested in algorithms, uh, uh, mathematics. In fact, on digital, there are three ways to ace digital, ACE, algorithms, community and engagement. Community engagement is part of the storytelling experience and understand, understand algorithms and how they work and data crunching the digital story will be incomplete. So we are poorly scoring on that part. We're looking for data scientists to join marketing fraternity. I don't see for the next couple of years this being a area of less opportunity for marketeers. Huge, Great. huge, huge potential. Yeah, I can completely relate to it. Puneet, one last question we take, guys. And again, I just want to let you know that we will be sharing with you the recording of this session as well. Uh, Bala had asked a question, what is the best way to educate people about an app like 1MG? and make them buy from it. I think that would cover about mobile apps to a certain extent. And with that, we will close this session. I, I, I would not like to comment on brand specific, uh, but again, if you want a short burst, paid campaigns is the best way to go. Uh, you will need a lot more dollars to go out there and do it. Uh, I think we have gone beyond the maturity curve of cost per install and cost per transaction through affiliate campaigns. I'm glad that post is buried and dusted. Uh, so clearly content-led promotion, maybe on platforms, rented platforms, we use a lot of money. But in my view, it's the stickiness of your app experience. If it's the stickiness of users uh, voting on the app experience, it, or the engagement through SMS, email, phone alerts, browser notification. These are some of the key ways you can look at the user profile and, and so preferences-led campaigns which align with the consumer journey. Uh, the brand you mentioned has a substantial following. It's not a brand new startup. So they should leverage that more and more to grow the ecosystem and fan following they have rather than big spends on just acquiring new users. That would be my bias. But if you're looking for a short term spike in the users, you could go for publishers who have databases. And there are also publishers now in India, which are not the Google or Facebook. These are two brand publishers with their own opt-in databases who could help you with some of your campaigns in terms of partnership and maybe not CPL, but definitely CPO and CPC kind of campaigns. So you should evaluate that as well. Sure, Puneet. And to add to that, uh, Bala, I would say that definitely you mentioned yourself, educate people about an app. So surely healthcare is a, is a great domain to leverage uh, content marketing. So uh, I think there can be significant amount of relevant content which could be created and that becomes your way to uh, you know educate people about and attract people who are worried about healthcare as a domain and then you should look at a natural way for them to look at 1mg as a as an app for them to fulfill their further needs right with that uh, guys i'm i'm very very happy that we had 
so lively engagement and uh, so insightful insightful session by puneet uh, thank you so much puneet and i'm also sad that we are still leaving some questions on the plate but uh, given you know the scarcity of time uh, my personal apologies to all of you uh, for whom we have not been able to answer your question but uh, you know you as puneet has shared uh, puneet is available on twitter as well modgil is his twitter id and uh, you can continue to exchange uh, this conversation uh, with puneet with us as well and as i had shared earlier really looking forward to having our next session on uh, you know key for success in seo for 2018 next friday 3 to 4 i have shared the link with all of you uh, thanks so much everyone and uh, wish you very happy republic day thanks puneet once again uh, thanks and have a great time Thank you, Pradeep, for the opportunity. Second time with uh, Digital Vidya team. I've thoroughly enjoyed it, and I'll be happy to take questions on my email as a follow-up of this webinar. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.